We talk about living in the supernatural. Living in the supernatural. But I got to put my mind on that. I got to think like that. I got to have expectation. I got to put that in my thinking. I got to have that in my thoughts. But now watch this here. Let me go, oh man, because I'm just so, y'all blow oh my God. Let, look, look at verse 42, right? verse 47. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. For he was what? At the point of death. This man went looking for Jesus. This man seeking him because he knew that Jesus was the answer. You got to follow me this morning. He went looking for Jesus. Remember, the atmosphere was already set. He went looking for him because he knew he was the answer. You got to know who your answer is. You got to know where your answer going to come from. You got to know who is the source of your life. You got to know who is the strength. You got to know who to go to. We're talking about living in the supernatural. He was went to Jesus, but watch this here. He was at the point of death. Look at verse 48, 40, verse 48. Then said Jesus unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, sir, Come down, my child die. Jesus said unto him. Notice what he said. Go thy way, thy son, what? Liveth. And the man believed what? He believed what? He believed what? He believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And what did he do? He went his way. That is the prescription to live it in a supernatural life. We think living in a supernatural or experiencing a supernatural, I got to pray for 10 hours. I got to go fast for 40 days and 40 nights. Well, what if I do that and still come back and don't believe what he said? Wow. This man got himself, himself in a position that he is about to experience the supernatural because he, he heard the word. That Jesus spoke. And notice what Jesus said. Go your way. Your son. What? Liveth. And the man believed the word. He didn't, he didn't have no physical evidence. He didn't need no physical evidence. All because what Jesus said. That's all the man needed. Hold your place there and go to Matthew chapter 8. We're talking about living in the supernatural. In Matthew chapter 8. Boy, we're going to get into some stuff this morning. Look at Matthew chapter 8. The man believed the word that Jesus had spoken. to him. Because I'm going to show you this morning what stops us from believing. Because a lot of times we think we're believing, but we have mental assent. Mental assent is that we, we believe with our mind, but not with our heart. What's stopping a man from believing with his heart? I'm going to show you here in a minute where that's where the hang up has been in the body of Christ. Because we've been, we've been believing with the mind but not in the heart. But we got to find out why have not we been believing with the heart. Because remember the scripture said, that, I mean the scripture tells us that if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just enough to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But then if any man come into Christ, Romans 10, 9, 8, 10, 9, 10, tell them, say, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Now, you know that you're saved. Okay, so when you got saved, after you got saved, you did that. You confessed with your mouth. You believed in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Okay, now you're saved. Okay, why am I not experiencing the supernatural life if I've done that? Because evidently some things is in our heart that's blocking us from believing. We're going to get into it. Just, just hold your seatbelt. Matthew chapter 8. Watch this. Matthew chapter 8. Look at verse 5. 
when Jesus entered into Capernaum, there came a there came unto him a satyrian beseeching him. Notice both of these encounters, they're going after him. They're going after him. They're going after him. Folks, we must not ever, ever lose our zeal and our fire for going after him. Don't go out the car. Don't go out the house. Don't go out the promotion. Don't go out the look. Don't go out the professionalism. No. Go out for him. And, if, and when you go out for him, he'll give you everything that you think you can't even have. Watch this. And saying, Lord, my servant lies at the home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The satyrian answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that I should come under my roof. But notice what he said. But what? Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. But notice what he said, verse 9. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. To another, come, and he cometh. To my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Jump down to verse 13 right quick because I got to move on. Jesus said unto the satyrian, go thy way, and as thou hast what? Believe. Believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self-same hour. Shout supernatural. supernatural. A supernatural event came about because this satyrian man believed. What did he believe though? He believed if he could just speak the word only... He believed that Jesus didn't have to come in his house. He believed he, there was a conviction that this man had that Jesus did not even have to come to his house. That if he would just speak the word right there where he was at, that his servant would be healed. Notice there was a conviction that this man had. Every conviction that you have will produce a life for you. What I don't have a conviction about, what I really truly don't believe, I'll never see the power of it. And that's what we got to look at this morning. What is affecting what you believe? What is affecting your conviction that at one point of time you just, man, you, man, you just, you, you knew that God was the source. But now, so go back to St. John 4, living in the supernatural. And St. John 4 again, notice here, verse 50. Jesus said unto him, go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And he was going down, his servant met him, told him, thy servant liveth. Then he inquired him of the hour when he began to amend, and they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour, shout same hour. Come on, shout same hour. Same hour. Come on, shout same hour. same hour. Come on, one more time. Same hour. Do you believe he can do something in the same hour? Do I believe that he can change my whole life in the same hour? Remember now, remember what he told him. As you believed, so be it done unto thee. If you can believe it, it's possible. Watch this though. And the man believed and himself believed and his whole house, his man's whole house was affected because of one thing that he believed. Isn't it amazing? Your belief can affect your whole house. What you believe can affect generations to come. What you believe can change their whole neighborhood. What you believe can change everybody on that job. What you believe can change everything in your bloodline. What you believe, what you believe, what you believe can change the course of your life forever. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Are you seeing this so far? Now, let's, let's, let's dig into some. Now, I'm going to have to take you through some scriptures, so y'all just be patient with me. In Matthew chapter 19, because I've got to deal with your belief. In Matthew chapter 19, praise God. Look at verse 26. Shout hallelujah in this place. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 19. 
Look at verse 26. Yeah, man, there you go. Matthew 19, 26. That's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah, hallelujah in this place. And look at Matthew chapter 19. Look at verse 26. So we're going to, um, we just lay, we just laying a foundation right now. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Jesus, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them. Come on, read it out loud, out loud with me, please. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are what? With men, this is impossible. But with God. So now he's establishing something else with us. Now, he's letting us know that when men is involved in your life, you can be limited. You, 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 I mean, you can be limited when men is involved. He said, but when God is involved, when God is involved, it removes the limitation. Now, all things are now possible. With men, it's impossible. But with God involved, all things what now becomes possible. So that, that changes my whole view now. That changes my whole view because now God is involved in my life. God is with me. I'm a changed man. You're a changed woman. We're not who we used to be. So who I once was, I understand that there was limitations in my life because God wasn't in my life. But because God is in my life now, because God is in your life now, that has removed all the limitations of what can and can't be. I'm now in a position, you now in a position, it don't matter about your educational background. It don't matter about what side of the track you come from. It don't matter about what life you once lived. It don't matter now about who you once was at one time in your life. I don't care what you did in the past. Who you are now position you to live a whole new life altogether. Who you, not who you was, but who you are now. Shout who I am now. Shout all things are possible. So I got to remember that. I got to understand that now if I put my confidence and trust in a man, I'm still going to be limited. But if I make my connection, all my connection be with God, now all the limitations are removed. Now all things are possible. Go to Mark 9. Are you seeing that here? We're talking about living in the supernatural. In Mark chapter 9, and I'm qualified to teach this. Let, 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 let me just say that. Let me say that. Let me say that. Let, 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 me just get, let me just cut to the chase right now. I'm not preaching to you something I heard. I'm not preaching to you a message that I heard from somebody else. I'm not preaching to you something that I've seen in the book. I'm preaching to you what me and this woman are living right now. I said I'm preaching to you what we're living right now. This word is a live word. This word is not coming from the lips of somebody who don't know what they're talking about. This word coming from the lips of a person who has experienced what he's teaching you. Now, it's up to you to listen and receive. It's up to you to grab hold of this thing. Now, watch this here. Mark 9. Mark chapter 9. Look at verse 23. Jesus said unto him, if thou can what? Believe. All things are what? Possible to him that believes. Now notice he's taking this thing a little step further now. He said now, if you can believe. He said earlier with me this is impossible but with God all things are possible. Now he's saying if you can believe. In other words, you mean if you can believe. If you can still believe and trust what God said in spite of what you see, in spite of what you feel, in spite of what it looks like, if you can hold on and believe and trust what God has said in spite of what you see, in spite of what you feel, in spite of what, you, what it looks like, if you can Believe if you can hold on to what God has said in spite of what you see, in spite of what you feel, in spite of what it looked like. Jesus said, if you can believe. In other words, if you can hold on to this thing and still keep believing, no matter what you see, all things are possible to him. Watch it. That will hold on to what they believe. So now you can see just from this fact already that every battle and every fight that you encounter is over what you believe. 
That's why you're always hearing contradiction. That's why things are always coming at you. That's why things are trying to flood your life. They try to get you to question if it can be done. That's why things are could be coming to you and coming at you with words and things being said and things being done to try to prove, to see if it will or will not work. That's called the testing period. See, every one of us has to be tested whether we're going to hold on, whether we see anything or not, whether we understand what somebody else doing or what somebody else saying or doing or not. Man, I'm telling you, I've had some experiences in these 30 years where people have challenged what I believe. And watch this. I was not moved by, and I'm still 30 years later, is not moved by what somebody else believe or what they don't believe. I know what I believe, and what I believe has worked, and it's still working, and it's continued to work. Because if you're looking for validation, you're going to wonder why I'm not solid in my belief. Because I'm waiting for validation to really believe. When Jesus already gave us the prescription to the supernatural, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Are you with me here? Now, watch this here. Go with St. Luke 1. St. Luke chapter 1. In St. Luke chapter 1, look at verse 37. In St. Luke chapter 1, verse 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. So now, I, I gave you all of these scriptures here to, to recondition your mind, to get you to think about and to look at when God is involved and when God is with me. Notice here what he said, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Well, the story here is about Mary being conceived. So no matter what it looked like, Mary, even though you hadn't been with a man, because God said it, if you just receive what God said, the seed of God's word, Mary, is going to come inside you and impregnate you with what he said. It's not the normal. It's not meant to be the normal. Because God is showing you and I that as believers in Christ, the supernatural is natural. And he's showing us the source to it is the word of God. If I believe, if I hold on to it, if I believe this word, if I make this word a priority, the same word that made the heaven and earth is the same word as in our hand today. If I can believe it, though, all things are possible to him that believes. So now I got to recondition my thought life. I got to recondition my mind. I got to begin to think different. I got to begin to see different. I, be, I got to begin to see, wait a minute, I'm not who I used to be. Wait a minute, there's a whole new, la there's a whole new level of life now that I'm exposed to. And, and, I, can't, and I can't look at uh, who, who believe it or who don't believe it. I now, I, just because I now got to understand, it, man, I got to go after this thing. Because maybe you're the one that God is trying to use that's going to change your family dynamics. Maybe you're the one God trying to get out of the country that you've always been in. Get out of the area that you've always been in. Get out of the place that you've always been in. Maybe you're the Abraham of your family that God is trying to call you out. So you can go back and pour everybody else out. But if you can't trust his word. Who are we going to be able to use? Now, let's go a little deeper now. Go to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. This is a lot of information I know it this morning, but in Galatians chapter 4, look at verse 28 right quick. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so now, watch this. Nevertheless, 
what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be the heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Verse 31 in the Amplified, right quick. This is what I want you, before we move on, this is the springboard of this message. Verse 31 says, in the Amplified version, it says, So brethren, we who are born again, watch this now, are not children of a slave woman, the natural, but of the free, the supernatural. In other words, the scripture now is letting you and I know that when you and I got born again, our life changed. We shifted systems. We are no longer under the control and the dominion of this natural physical world system. But now, we, because we are born again, we have been born into a whole new life. A freedom, a life of freedom, a life that Jesus paid his uh, play, pay for with his blood of the supernatural, a whole new life. We're now born into the supernatural. So now what do you mean, Pastor Stevens? Now the supernatural is natural now. Are you with me here? Shout, I'm born of the supernatural. Now go to Mark chapter 1. Here we go. Mark chapter 1. I'm born of the supernatural. Because it's a struggle now. And I understand that a lot of the body of Christ have not heard a message like this. And, 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 you know, and that's why I got to take my time with it. Because a lot of us have not been taught this. I was taught it in the later years. But now even this day, 30 years later, I'm now getting a greater revelation today than what I've ever got what I'm sharing with you right now. Watch this here, because we're born of the supernatural. Now look at Mark chapter 1, because we're headed somewhere here. In Mark chapter 1, we fin we fin I really identify some things. In Mark chapter 1, verse 14, now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled, watch this, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus came preaching the kingdom because Jesus came to earth. He brought the kingdom with him. He brought the supernatural with him. And notice what he said. He came preaching the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel of the word of God. The word of God is the producer of the supernatural. Shout the word of God. Is, is the, producer the producer of the supernatural. Of the supernatural. Jesus came in preaching that. But notice here what he said. Jesus said something now that we finna really make some strong connections with. He said, repent ye and what? Believe the gospel. Now, I've taught on this scripture for years. But I'm about to hit you with something this morning. That I ain't never hit you with before. And I always shared with you. Repent means to think differently. Have a change of mind right? But it's more added to that. That the Holy Spirit enlightened me on. He said repent. Listen to this now. He said repent. Means. Not only just to think differently. Have a change of mind. But repent also is an express sincere regret or remorse about one wrongdoing. A sincere express remorse or regret from one wrongdoing. That word repentance, watch this, that word repentance means it, when a person uh, re have repented or when they are repenting, that means it requires, watch this, an omission of guilt for committing a wrong and committing to do the right thing. 
He said, when, that's why Jesus said, now, before you do anything, I need for you to repent. Watch this. I've been, I've been teaching, and please forgive me, I've been teaching it backwards. Think differently, have a change of mind. You'll never be able to think differently and have a change of mind until you have a remorse of what you've done. You'll never be able to think different and have a change of mind until there is a sincere regret of what you've done. Because if I have not really regretted or have a sincere remorse about the things I've done, I'll keep going back to it. I'll keep going back to it. And that's what's been missing in the church. People still going back to stuff they're supposed to be free from. They keep going back to things they're supposed to be delivered from. They keep going back to things that God trying to set them free from. So because they keep going back, no supernatural can take place. That's why I took you through all them scriptures. That's why Jesus said, now, before you can even believe the gospel, I need for you to get serious about that thing that you did wrong. I need for you to make a decision and make up your mind that you ain't going back to that stuff. You ain't, going to you, you ain't going back to it. You got to settle that thing that God, you in my life, I'm admitting I was a sinner. I was messed up. I like God, I thank you for what you did. I thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life. I thank you for cleaning me up. I realized I was a mess. I realized I was angry. I realized I was a real mean person. I don't want to be that person no more. Watch this. Then you can believe the gospel. We're heading somewhere. We're heading somewhere this morning. We're just getting started. Watch this here. Because, let, oh, let me just finish reading this. We're going to move on. Now, as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, brother, casting a net into the sea. And Jesus said, come you after me. And I will make you to become. In other words, if you come out to me, I'm going to make your life. If you come out to me, if you seek me, if you search for me, I'm going to make your life. I'm going to make you to become. Shout supernatural. supernatural. You cannot go after God and God don't make things go after you. You cannot go after God and God don't make things come after you. Because he made you and I a promise that if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall what? Be added to you. He said, take no thought for your life. Now think about this for a minute. He's telling you, don't worry about your life, I got you. Don't worry about how you're going to eat, I got you. Don't worry about how you're going to drink. I got you. Don't even worry about how you're going to get clothed yourself. I got you. All I need for you to do is seek my kingdom first. Go after me. Learn me. Get to know me. Have a relationship with me. And if you come after me, learn me. Have a relationship with me. I'll make everything come to you that you ain't got to work for. You ain't got to connive for. You ain't got to cheat. You ain't got to steal. I'll make it come to you. I'll make people bless you. I'll make people open up doors for you. You ain't got to argue with not one person. If you just seek me, I'll put you in place that your education can't put you into. If you seek me, I'll put you in places that your degree can't even handle. Oh, man. Come after me. Repent. I got to have a change of mind. I got to look at those things and I got to remember. I can't go back to that. I can't go back to that. Shot. It's R&R &R time. Oh, time. I'm not talking about rest and relaxation either. The R&R &R I'm talking about is called repentance and restoration. Yeah. 
before God can really restore you of everything he want to bring to you, he needs from you a sincere repentance. He needs something from you that's going to let him know you ain't going back to that. He need to know that you, 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 you're real about that thing. You're sincere about that thing. That when he call you over the place he's taking you to, he need to know without a shadow of a doubt that you're not going to be enticed to keep going back. So some things have not been restored because there have not been no real repentance. Watch this. We've been saying, God, I'm sorry. Watch this. But do it again. Has anybody ever said, I'm sorry, but do it again? I ain't going to do it no more, but do it again. I remember I did that when I used to get drunk. I'd be so high and so drunk. God, if you real, make me come down. And I'll never drink again and drink again the very next day. Well, okay, I might be in the wrong place. <laughs> but no, repentance is not saying I'm sorry. Repentance is recognizing I can't do that no more. I can't go down that road no more. I, but in order to really repent... I got to look at and be honest with myself. Because if I'm not honest with myself, where I'm at, I won't really repent God's way. Are you with me here? Now, go with me if you were in the book of Joel, chapter 2. Repentance requires an omission of guilt. I'll never forget, man, Joel chapter 2. I'll never forget when, when God was dealing me about ministry and me and Lady Stevenson, you know, we, you know, because we weren't married at the time, and I moved back home with my mom, and, and, and I was in the room praying one night, and, and, and I just had an urge just, just, to, just to go get on my face before the Lord and because I was really seeking God. I really wanted to just know what God's will and plan was for my life, and I, and I had a, like a mini vision. I, I can't even tell you exactly what it was, but I, all I remember was it's like he began to show me clips of things I've done. The wrong I've done, the things I've hurt. I, it was like I had visions of my mother laying, sitting, sitting on the side of the bed praying and, and the things I had did out there in the streets. And, 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 and the more every vision is like I saw, it's like a deeper something was going into my heart. And I, I couldn't remove that thing. And I said, God, what is this? What is this? And this is what he said to me. He said, I'm letting you feel what you've done to people. I'm letting you feel what your mother felt. I'm letting you feel how you hurt people. And I'm, I'm crying and I'm hitting, oh God, please take this thing out of me. God, please. I said, God, now this is the vision. I'm thinking I'm dreaming. I said, God, if you ever, God, I will never intentionally hurt nobody. God, I promise you that. And when I said that, I came to. And my mother was standing right there. And she said, son, you okay? I said, mom, what happened? She said, all I, do, I heard you hollering and screaming. She said, when I came in here, you were hitting the floor. Because in me, in, in, in the vision, I was taking it out of my chest, and I was doing this on the floor. I said, oh, my God, you made me feel what it was to hurt somebody else. I said, God, I promise you I'd never do it. I never, now somebody may say I may hurt them, but I did not do it intentionally. I would never do that. Why? A true repentance came. See, true repentance will never allow you to go back to it. True repentance will have you to be honest with yourself and say, you know what? That was, man, I, oh, you know what? I can't do that. I can't do that. God, I want to do what's right to with you. Are you listening to me? Now watch this, Joel chapter 2. Hallelujah. We're talking about living in the supernatural. In Joel chapter 2, are y'all okay? Look at verse 12. Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore also now said the Lord, turn ye to me, watch this, with all your heart, and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Notice how God is telling them, turn to me. Now, but when you turn to me, turn with sincerity. Turn with, turn to me as if you're ready to change. 
Because if I had not had enough of the world, I'll keep eating it. I'll keep drinking it. I'll keep tangling with it. Whatever I hadn't settled, I'll keep going back to. So God said, when you come to me, when you turn to me, come and turn to me with sincerity. Now, if you're struggling, that's okay. I'll help you get through it. I'll break the power of your life. But I just need you to be honest with me and tell me that you're struggling. Tell me you got an alcohol addiction. Tell me that you're struggling with some drugs. Tell me there's some things that you're struggling with. And if you just be honest with me and tell me that you're struggling with this thing and you turn to me with sincerity and at heart, I will help you. But if you turn to me and act like ain't nothing wrong, if you turn to me and act like everything is okay, when you know it's not, you now put yourself in a position that you'll keep going back to something. Watch this here. Watch this. Notice here in verse 13. And rent your heart, not your garments. God said, I need for you to rent your heart. I need for you to wring your heart out. Get the things out your heart. Watch this. Not your clothes. What good is it to look good, but your heart ain't good? What good is it to look good, but your heart is not good? He said, I need for you to rend your heart, not your garments. Because your garments is not going to make you who you are. It's your heart that's going to make you who you are. But notice here now, we headed somewhere, just be patient. Turn unto me, turn unto God. For he is, for he is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and of great kindness and repentance him of the evil. Who knoweth he will return and repent, leave a blessing behind him. In other notice here what he tell him. He said, if you just return to me, I'm gracious. I'm merciful. I'm not going to hold it over your head. No, man, I'm going to deliver you from all of that and I'm going to cause the blessing to rest on you. But notice he said, but if you don't do it, you're leaving the blessing behind. He said, if you don't do it, if you don't repent and turn in your heart, he said, you're leaving a blessing behind. I've never seen that in 30 years. That he's saying, if you would just come to me, be honest and sincere to me, I'm gracious, I'm merciful. I'm going to cause the blessing to rest on your house. In other words, nothing about what you ever done will ever be thought of, it will ever be brought up ever again, will ever be ever be a remembrance. But if you don't do it, you're leaving the blessing behind. Whew. Watch this here. Look at verse, verse 16. No, verse 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. That's what I'm doing this morning. Sanctify fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people together. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, those who suck breasts and those who bride go, go forth into the chamber, the bride out of a closet. Look at verse 17. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Now he's bringing it down to the ministers and he's letting the pastors know, look, you got to stand between the you and the people. You got to weep for the people. You got to intercede for the people. This is not on y'all. This is on the pulpit. He said, pulpit, I'm just using a pulpit. Ministers, you stand between the porch and the altar. You be the one that intercede for the people. You be the one that be the sacrifice to show them what they need to do. If man to God, if there's no repentance in you, it won't be no repentance in them. Man of God, if you live a loose life, they'll live a loose life. Man of God, if you just act in the kind of way, they will act in the kind of way. Man of God, if you talk in the kind of way, they will talk in the kind of way. Man of God, if you just do anything, they will do anything. Man of God, if you're going to represent me, you stand between the altar and the porch. Give them something to look at. Watch this. And let them say, spare thy people, O Lord. Give not thine heritage for reproach, that the heathen should root over them. Wherefore, should they say among the people, where is their God? Watch it. Let me just move on. Look at verse, verse 23. Here we go. Verse 23. 
We're talking about living in the supernatural. Be glad then, you children of Zion. Here we go. We're getting, we're getting there. Be glad. Notice, attitude changed now. Be glad. You ain't got to worry about nothing. God got me. You ain't got to try to argue. God got you. You ain't got to try to figure this thing out. God has already got you. He already promised you he's going to give you a word, and that word he's going to give you, God watches over his word, hasten to perform it. God will never tell you to do anything that he have not already positioned an answer. God will never tell you to do anything without already being in it, the fulfillment of that word. Watch this. Be glad. Rejoice in the Lord your God. Here we go. They just sung it. For he has given you the former rain moderately. He will cause. Here we go. Supernatural. He will what? Cause. He will what? He will what? This is where we at today. He will cause. God is about to cause rain to hit your house like you never thought he could come. That's why he sent this word because this word is being sent to make adjustment that need to be made. This word is not a con condemning word. This word is not a judgmental word. This word is an adjustment because God said, I'm about to send some rain. And the rain that I'm going to send in your life, it, it's not going to be nothing like the ones you've already experienced. You experience blessings here and blessings there. God said, I'm about to bring something in your life. I'm about to cause rain to hit your life. Not just come every once in a while, but I'm talking about a continual flow. Shout a continual flow. Come on, shout a continual flow. How far somebody right quick tell them say a continual flow. Come on, so how, how far somebody that's talking about a continual flow? There's about to be a continual flow. A flow with no interruptions. A flow with that river they just talked about. Something they just talked about. Their flow is about to come. God this morning, the angels this morning, is removing the debris out your stream. Angels is removing rocks out your stream. There is right now a supernatural presence. What the things that have been in the stream of your life that caused by stuff that was beyond your control. You had no control of the leaves coming in. You had no control of the branches that broke off and came down in your stream. In other words, there are some things coming in your life you had no control of. But God by his spirit and because he's gracious and because he's merciful and because he understands there are some things that's beyond your control. He said, I'm sending a rain. Not like the former rain. Shout new doors are opening for me right now. Uh-huh, new doors. New doors. New people are coming into your life. New things is about to transpire. New places that you're about to step into. Some of you right now, watch this. Watch this here. Some of you are about to visit places. And, and some of you may have already done it. Some of you have been to some places you've never been before. Watch this. You know why? Because you're about to go in a place you've never been before. Some of you been thinking about, I would love to go over here. I would love to go to Dubai. I would love to go here. I would love. And, and you, these dreams about going into new places. And why you want to go over there? I don't know. I just want to go. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost put on the inside of you that you're about to go into a whole new place. So don't be afraid of stepping into new territory. He's trying to get you out of an old mindset and into a whole new mindset. That new territory should not be feared. It's supposed to be conquered. Hallelujah. It's not supposed to be feared. It's supposed to be conquered. Stop being fearful of how it's going to be. 
You, you already talking about, well, if I get that, then this right. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop prophesying the wrong future. When God already got you. Stop predicting the negative. When God has already got this thing lined up for the positive. Because if you predicted the negative now, you're putting your expectation in the mix. And now God has to honor your expectation. Are you with me here? Oh, man, let me finish reading this. God, we got to go. We got to go. Watch this here. Ah, rejoice. But notice he said, be glad and rejoice. I got to hit on that a little bit. Be glad. Shout, be glad. Be glad. And rejoice. So my attitude now has everything to do with this rain. My attitude has everything to do with this rain now. I got to look at my attitude. I can't be murmuring. I can't be complaining. This is not the time to be fault finding. This is not the time to be belittled nothing or nobody else. This is not the time to have negative speech. This is not the time to be critical. This is not the time to be criticizing. This is not the time to be blaming and throwing the blame, throwing stones at other people. No, it's not the time for that. I got to be glad. I got to rejoice. I got to maintain the right spirit. I got to maintain the right attitude. I got to look at my attitude. I got to look at my mouth. I got to look at my mind. Be glad then and rejoice. Watch this here. He will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be what? Full of wheat and shall the overflow with wine and oil. Here we go. I will restore to you the years, the years, the years. I will restore. Shout, it's restoration, time. it's restoration time. Come on, shout, it's restoration time. It's restoration time. Now watch this. Watch this right quick. I got to read this to you because I know, I, watch this, Lady Stevenson. Watch this here. This is what it showed me. Because a lot of people say, why you be doing to her? She, when she, she get, she preach, she be in expectation just like everybody else do. She be looking to hear from God just like everybody else do. That's why I be coming to her. Watch this here. Restoration. This is what it showed me this morning. What does restoration mean? The action of returning to a former place or condition. The action to return to a former place or condition. Now watch this, y'all. What do you mean, the former place? What is my former place? I don't want to go back to my former place. <laughs> Think about it, y'all. I've never seen it like this. Because when you hear this, people say, well, restoration, God was going back to the former place. Okay, none of us don't want to go back to where we came from. So what do, what, what do that really mean then? To go back to a former place, original place. The place in the Garden of Eden. When, he, when the scripture talks about restoration, he's, talk, he's telling all of us that he's going to take us back to our original place in God. In the garden. Before we got put out of the garden. What was the garden? The garden was a land that flowed with milk and honey. The garden was a place of provisions. It was a place that everything Adam and Eve ever wanted, needed, or desired, they already had it at their disposal. See, we lost that place when Adam and Eve did what they did. But when we got born again, when we got born into the supernatural, we got put right back into that place. So when he said, I'm going to restore to you, what, what, what restoration mean? Going back to original place. Well, I don't want to physically go back to my original place. But he said, oh, no, no, it ain't about where you're going back physically. It's about where you're going back spiritually. Because you live from the inside out. So everything you ever want, need, or desire, watch this, is already in you. Oh, it's already in you. Shot is already in me. Everything I will ever need, want, 
desire. When I received Jesus, I received all of it. He said, I'm going to restore unto you the years. The years the devil stole from you. Watch this. When you didn't know nothing about God. Man, he showed me this thing. I said, oh my God. I never seen it from that fashion. He said, I'm going to restore to you the years. How old were you when you got born again? You ain't got to answer. I just want you to think. From the time that you got born again to the time you came into this earth, I'm going to restore unto you the years. Because from the time you came into this earth to the age you got born again, the canker worm had access to you. The pummel worm had access to you. Everything the devil had tried to have access to you. But the day you got born again, he said, now I'm going to restore unto you the years. The years you've lost because you didn't know him. The years that you lost because you didn't know anything about him. Watch this. And, and, and the sad thing about it, even after we got born again, we still didn't know that restoration was our lot. So we still, some of us, after we got saved, still did not experience the Abrahamic covenant because we did not know that the Abrahamic covenant was ours. But that devil lost his battle now. He lost now because I'm sounding the trumpet. I got to go, but I'm sounding the trumpet because I want every one of you to know the life that you once knew, you don't know no more. The things that you once knew, don't you know it no more. This is a new day. This is a new hour. This is a new time. This is a new season. And I don't care how it may look in the natural, God already knew and know what you have need of. He already knew everything that was going to be up to this point. He already know what it's going to take to get you to where he's going to take you. That's why he said, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you shall put on. Oh, he got you. Oh, he got, shout, God got me. God got me. Come on, shout, God got me. God got me. Shout, I, I, don't lack I don't lack nothing. I ain't lacking nothing. Ain't lacking nothing. Shout, nothing is, nothing is missing. Nothing is broken. Nothing is, broken. Nothing is, lacking. Nothing is lacking. Shout, restoration, restoration. Is, in is in my house. Come on, point at somebody and tell them, restoration, restoration. is in your house. Point at somebody that restoration, restoration is in your house. Pastor, what you're doing? Because what you may happen for somebody else, you already said it about you. Now you need to put it on somebody else. You prophesy to somebody else. You speak to somebody else. And you tell them restoration is in your house. Don't you argue another day. Don't you fight another day. Don't you let them steal your peace. Don't you let them steal your joy. No. Restoration is in your house. Nothing is missing. Nothing is broken. Nothing is lacking. Don't you walk out of here today with your head down. Restoration is in your house. Jesus said, go your way. Your son lived. And the man believed the word that came out of the mouth of Jesus. And he went his way. When he got home, when did my son get healed? Well, about this time yesterday, that was the same time he spoke. Oh, somebody missed that. That was the same time he spoke. The man was not physically there to see his son healed. But healing was already there because the word was sent. You may not can physically see what this word had just been sent. But his word will not return back unto him void. Now, if you can't see it in the natural, you see it in the spirit. How you see it in the spirit? I already know it's done. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. I'm walking out of here today looking for restoration. I'm walking out of here today expecting restoration to right high. Huh? 
right now. Come on, shout right now. Right now. Come on, right now. Right now. Right now, thank you. Right now. Restoration right now. So devil, take your hands off. Get out of the way right now. Demon, get out of my way right now. Pain, get out of my way right now. Persecution, get out of my way right now. Right now. Come on, stand with me, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.